this point, I've kind of lost count of how many people have asked me what software I use for recording the screen of my TFI videos, and it's been the same answer for four years, mate. I use XSplit Broadcaster, which is going to raise a few eyebrows from a few people who uh, who are into this kind of thing. Will be like, well, that's not, that's not really what it's for, is it? And you're right, it's not. XSplit Broadcaster is designed to broadcast your screen to live streaming websites, the likes of Twitch and YouTube Live for live streaming. But XSplit has a fantastic local recording facility, which I've used extensively for four years, and it's never missed a beat. I stand by it, and even though it's not what it's explicitly designed for, it does the job just fine, and I ain't changing, and I'm sticking with it for as long as I can. This is not sponsored, obviously. I'm not big enough to be sponsored, but I've paid for XSplit out my own pocket for the last four years. And on that note, XSplit is not free. There is a free version, but you'll get watermarks on your videos if you record anything over 720p, which in most cases you will, because 720p is just not good enough these days for most people. So to go up to the premium level, it'll cost you $60 a year, which is, to some people, a lot, of, a hell of a lot of money, and possibly not worth it, but to me, that's money well spent, and I've paid that for four years to get the full version. So the reason I use XSplit, there's, there's a lot of reasons why I use XSplit, to be fair, like, it's absolutely brilliant. It has a fantastic, diverse array of tools and feature sets for everything that I want, mostly around the screen resolution and the frame rate. So we can go up to 4K at, at as many frames per second as you want. It can record almost any resolution and frame rate that you want to throw at it. So for most of my videos, I record at 1920 by 1080 at 60 frames per second. And that, because in this industry that I'm operating within, people don't have gaming monitors. They tend to have HP monitors, Dell monitors, and they're all running at 60 Hertz. So 60 frames per second is just fine for most people that watch my content. So in the resolution flyout here, I can set it to be the resolution of 1080p, or I can go to 1440p in widescreen format which is uh, what my main monitor is actually at. I've got a, an LG widescreen monitor and it records at this kind of an aspect ratio, which is quite wide. So I've done a couple of videos in that format, but mostly it records at 1920 by 1080, which is that black area there. And then we've got an option for frame rate 60 or 30. Uh, and pretty much every video that I've ever done is at 60 frames per second. It's just visually, it's obvious and it's a lot smoother. We've got a lot of control over what we can record as well. If you just want to record your desktop and that's it, everything that you open on your computer you want to record, all you do is you go to uh, sources, screen capture, point the red cursor at your desktop and it creates like a tile and you can maximize or minimize that tile to fit this black region and this black region is essentially your video so if we were to hit record right now the video would be my desktop in kind of like the corner of the screen or we can maximize it up to fill the entire video uh, and the benefit of this is that it stacks all the entities in this bottom area down here so if you want to go to sources add your webcam, it'll add the webcam as a line and then you can order them, stack them. So they put the webcam on top and then the webcam will appear in the corner as a tile. That's how people create that sort of webcam over the video type effect. You can also record applications if we open up Autodesk Inventor and then go back to XSplit, we can say sources, screen capture, point this at Inventor and it picks up the application explicitly and it doesn't record anything else other than what's going on in that application. So you can see XSplit's over the top of Inventor, but the video won't show XSplit. If I go to start at the bottom, it won't show that in the video. It's only showing what's going on inside Autodesk Inventor. And it's really, really smooth as well. The bit rate that XSplit records at is solid. If we go into output and then on the local record, this is the trigger that I use to start the videos off. If you go into settings, you've got a number of different quality presets and I always go for ultra high. The bit rate is variable. It depends on what you're recording, but it tends to be, it's not lossless, but there's very little, if any, artifacts going on. So if we do, a, let's let's start a local recording. So this is XSplit kicking off and starting to record. And I'll go over to Inventor. We'll just finish that sketch. We'll start a new one. So we'll get some work planes on screen. And then you can see there's a bit of movement going on in there. So we'll go back over to XSplit. We'll stop the recording. There is a shortcut, Alt and R on the keyboard, but I find it to be a bit laggy using the keyboard shortcuts. We'll go to the desktop and there's the video it's created, mate. So this, uh, this is the video file that I use to import into Premiere Pro and then start editing on. So it's recording 15 seconds of footage in 1920 by 1080 and the bit rate has come out at 929 kilobits per second with a total bit rate of 1039 kilobits per second and it's recorded at 60 frames per second so that's pretty perfect. If we open this up uh, you can see there there's a bit of banding in the gradient background but it's not it's not distracting. All the text is razor sharp. The work planes if I just hit pause 
go back to the work planes. You can see there's a little bit of artifacts going on around the, the outline of the work plane. It's, it is minimal. It's so minimal that I'm not even concerned about it at all. Uh, and uh, when it starts moving, the bitrate does a good job of catching up. There's no blocky effect or distortion going on in there. So it does the job perfectly just for me. It might not be good enough for other people, but it's good enough for me. So uh, that's the video file that it creates, 60 frames per second at 1080p. So uh, yeah, that's what I use. There's a few other options that you can uh, you can use to control either your stream or your local recording. I've, you can have scenes down here at the bottom right. Scene one could be just the desktop background with all the icons and what's going on in the desktop. And then scene two could be just the application. So uh, let's I'll just show you how that would work. We'll go to scene one. We'll set up uh, a screen capture of the desktop and then we'll enable scene two. And then we can say the sources will be, we'll have to fire up Inventor, that will be the Inventor application. So as you do in your screen recording and you've you've started and triggered the recording, you could flick over to scene one and then scene two and then it does this sort of smooth gradient transition between the two. You can control what, what is actually being recorded in terms of audio, so we can turn off system sounds. If you don't want emails and Windows notification bongs to come through into your video, you can turn those off. Uh, or leave them on if you need the audio from the applications like games you would need the audio from games to appear in the videos and then this is a uh, mute and unmute your microphone and uh, yeah yeah that's that's probably about enough i would have thought there's uh, there's a hell of a lot of options in here it's not going to be it's, it wasn't supposed to be a full tutorial it was just what i use and why i use it so the, the takeaway from this is i use xsplit and I use it because I can get 60 frames per second at 1080p and I can go up to full widescreen retaining that 60 frames per second. And if I ever do migrate up to a 4K monitor, I can continue to use this at 60 frames per second. It's easy to use. I've got a lot of control and flexibility over the applications and how the applications are laid out. There will be other bits of software that does just as good of a job, but I've become comfortable with this. The, the lowest of the low end of screen capture software is the likes of Camtasia, but Camtasia is pretty poor for higher resolutions and uh, frame rates. So I've heard anyway, so I've heard it was the last time I looked at it. So that's what I use, Expert Broadcaster, $60 a year roughly, and uh, that's how I use it. So that'll do for this one. Thank you very much. If you liked it, press like. If uh, this kind of stuff's interesting to you, then get subscribed because uh, I do quite a few bits and pieces like this. Uh, in between 3D CAD tutorials. So get subbed if you like what you see, and I'll see you in the next one. Toodles.